Ladies and gentlemen, today I'm joined with a very special guest, Leicester Riders player, Jabril Adikoma. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing today? I'm good. Thank you for coming on. Obviously, this season, a bit of disappointment for Leicester Riders not going home with the championship. How have you dealt with that disappointment? Uh, you know, sports, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. I had the privilege of being around a year before this past season where we um, won three of the four potential trophies. So I've definitely seen what it was like. So, you know, highs to the highs, lows to the lows, you you deal with it and move on. What was that feeling like winning the treble? Obviously, you're part of it, like you said, and you contributed with a league high of 18 points. Yeah, it was incredible. I mean, anytime you get to win, especially at the professional level, just, just it's a really good feeling because, you know, all the work you put in and, you know, all the – you get lucky getting on nice teams with everyone gets along and stuff like that. So really appreciative of the three we were able to win a couple of years back. Is that why you play sports to, you know, win and be a world champion essentially? Um, personally, no. I mean, I just really love everything that basketball's been able to do for me and bring for me in my life. Just the connections I've made. I enjoy playing the game. You know, the stretches of it, the, you know, the stuff no one wants to do when no one's watching. I just really enjoy it. So, I mean, it's been like that for me my whole life playing. Well, obviously, you're from America. You, did Were you growing up playing basketball? Yeah, loads. It's every sport, really. Um, from I played everywhere from basketball to ice hockey to American football. So, just basketball just kind of stuck. Was there anyone who like inspired you from the NBA back then, or was it just you left playing hooping? LeBron James for sure. I'll just say LeBron and Carmelo Anthony were just kind of a uh, always so cool for me to watch on TV. So they definitely helped inspire me to play the game. Would you say LeBron's the goat, or do you think Michael Jordan or Kobe? <laughs> um, for. Politically, to remain politically neutral, I'm just not going to answer that one. <laughs> that's fair, that's fair. That's just an argument waiting to happen from somebody who sees this, so I'll, I'll refrain from answering that one. Obviously, you play basketball now in the UK. How does it compare to playing in like college in America? Um, I would say the jump from playing in college professional one is just like the physicality and the understanding of the game increases every level you go so that's a big one um but you know in america with the colleges there's a lot of money so like the facilities and all your recovery stuff and they really like to do the whole nine yards so you know they get the best kids they can to want to go to that school and they have the resources to do so so not that it's always necessary. That's another big difference. It's just like the facilities, the access you have to gyms and things like that in America. So that would be one of the biggest differences. Well, is that a cultural difference you found playing in the UK? Obviously, it's not as big here as it is over there in America. Right. Um, it's interesting, you know, because culturally, I'm used to being able to just wake up, find a gym to go to, you know, work out, get shots, lift weights, whatever. Like, it's not so difficult for me to just find that anywhere 10 minutes away from my house, five minutes away from my house. Just kind of talking with teammates and, you know, getting to know how they grew up in there, what their summers are like. I would say that's a big difference because um, I don't think they have the accessibility that we have, just facilities and, like, our park. Every city's got, like, a park district or a park district you can go to and play inside, play outside. It's just that availability all the time, I say, culturally. I didn't, I didn't feel the same way, which has something to do with the differences in styles culturally. Obviously, playing in the UK, you've been, at, you've, as well as the UK, you've played in Spain. How was that, how was that like? Oh, yeah, Spain was incredible. Uh, that was my first, the first place I was able to um, go to after college basketball. I was there for four years. I really enjoyed the time there and just learning about the culture and the basketball was pretty high level as well. Was coming over to the UK part of, like, developing your career? Um, for sure. For sure. I mean, I just took the step to, you know, obtain legal.
then we broke up. Obviously, like we were saying, you came over to UK with that to develop your career. Oh yeah, um, yeah, it was just a step, a step in uh, the career path for me. Like, I was really trying to come to England initially. One, just because I've heard about the league and it was interesting for me to want to play here. And most of my family's from London, so I just wanted to be around my family for a couple of years and, you know, be able to make the trip to spend the time. Because when I'm in the States or Spain or what have you, I'm not, I don't really have that opportunity. So I wanted to take advantage of that. Well, obviously, being a, playing in the UK, you're six or seven. Do you find like you stand out like a sore thumb over here compared to America? Oh, no, I mean... Not until I talk. When I talk, when I talk, they can tell I'm not from there. But until I open my mouth, I'm pretty. I blend in pretty well. I feel like. Obviously, Leicester Riders, like one of the most successful teams over like the last ten years in British basketball history. How is it part, being a part of that team now? Um, I mean, it's just a, it's a privilege, to really. Know. And that's one of the another reasons I came to England was because I've heard so many good things about the riders and then the opportunity surged to uh, be able to sign there. And I mean, I just took it pretty quickly just because of what I've heard and what I've seen and the successes they've had and the friends I've had who have passed through there just had nothing but good things to say. So, you know, with the idea of wanting to be close to my family, then this one came up. So it was kind of like two great things and one opportunity. So I had to take it. Do you think that in, over in America, obviously you have the NBA, do you feel like the European leagues don't get respected as much over there? Uh, I think it's changing. I think that's changing as we speak, just because of the success a lot of European players are having in the NBA in America. So, And when, um, when they play international competitions now, a lot of European teams are really showing out with NBA players and having success at that level too. So... Years ago, I would say, yeah, I think the European leagues lack the respect. But now I think um, from the general public or like the average fan, I think they start to understand now that there's a, it's a pretty good level globally with basketball. You found that was a big leap when, like we said before, when you finished college going over and playing in Spain. Was that quite a big leap for you back then too? Oh, for sure. For sure. I mean, I would say, and most people that know – the game and play around the world, I think they would agree that behind America, that Spain has the uh, highest level domestic basketball and basketball players there. Uh, they always have people in the NBA, like Luka Doncic was in, uh, grew up in Spain playing there developing. Serge Ibaka grew up in Spain playing there developing. So, yeah, I think uh, from college there, one, it was a big jump just from the college level to pro level, but uh, two, more so from like a mental aspect and understanding the game. I think that was a really big jump too, going to Spain my first year as a professional. Obviously, we talked about Luka Doncic. What's your thoughts on him tearing up with the Mavericks this season? Oh, he's incredible. I mean, I've been watching him since he was, I think, like 17 or 18 playing in Spain for Real Madrid. So, I mean, I knew he was pretty good, but I, did I think he would be – you know, top five player in the NBA so quickly. I don't know, but he's 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 very very good. He's at that level. Not this season before Christmas. Well, before the new year, it looked like him and Mavs were going to go to the playoffs and him winning the MP, MVP possibly. Yeah, I uh, I would have gambled that for sure. They were playing well, having success. Um, but the NBA, a lot of things change. It's an NBA basketball season. A lot of things can change quickly. You think they're signing up like Kyrie Irving her to that her that team? Sorry? Do you think they're signing up Kyrie Irving her that team from being like a third seed before the new year? No, I don't think so. I think he made them better. Well as well as um Doncic, we have um Jokic playing for Denver Nuggets in the NBA finals. How do you see that one going against Miami Heat? I think it's going to be a great series. I'm really excited. The first game is uh is tonight. I think it's in the morning sometime for you all over there, but yeah, it's definitely be morning. watching that one. Yeah, that one's uh, – that's going to be tough. You staying up for it? And, uh, just stay awake for like the half eight, 11 o'clock games over here. 
Yeah. That's so. Yeah, I'll be I'll be well away for that one. Really excited for this finals. I think uh, I can't tell you who's gonna win, but I think it'll be a really good series. With Jokic not winning MVP, he might finally get the chance of winning a ring. It's like he was cursed of, over two years. You know, some that's the way the story goes. Sometimes, I mean, we'll see. Like I said, we'll see. Jokic and the Nuggets have a really good team. Jimmy Butler and the Heat are playing really well at this moment. So. I'm just excited for some good basketball. Oh, we were talking about, like you said earlier, staying up and watching the NBA for people in the UK. Did you do that whilst the season was on for Leicester Rivals or was it a strict sleep schedule? Uh, I stayed up for the games that I wanted to watch. It wasn't like an every night type of thing, but I definitely stayed up for uh, some some high profile matchups and things like that where some superstars are playing against one another a nice a playoff game or something like that. Talking about like sleep schedule, do you have like a diet schedule too where you got like eat certain amount of carbohydrates, proteins and something? Uh, I don't, uh, I wouldn't say I like count my macros and do all that stuff, but I do eat pretty well. Of course, I'm back home on vacation right now, not every day will be strict to the book, but I think I, I like to believe I eat pretty well. But no strict being, diet, no strict diet. Being in Chicago now, what are you doing in the off season? Are you still shooting? For sure, yeah. I just, I, I mean, I'm just coming from a workout right now. Uh, I'll probably go shoot later, but it's not as much about like training so hard for me right now. Just being back for the first couple of weeks, I'm kind of trying to relax a little bit. But like I said, even trying to relax before this, I was working out. I'll probably go back to the gym later, but that's just because I enjoy it, really. It's just getting those reps in and making it muscle memory. Yeah, that's all there was to it. Nah, I'm not going to go run a mile or anything crazy like that later. Just, you know, like you said, just about getting the muscle memory in, getting your little work in. In your downtime during the regular season, is there any other sports you watch other than basketball, or is it just strictly basketball? Oh, no, I'm pretty uh, – I like to believe I'm pretty diverse. I really like MMA like UFC and Cage Warriors. Big shout out Cage Warriors. They really showed uh, me and my teammates a lot of love the past couple of seasons, having us at events and whatnot. So got to give a big shout out to Cage Warriors. But I like MMA, MMA and uh, tennis. I like tennis as well. So not all just basketball all the time. Talking about MMA, did you go to Leon Edwards versus Kamar Usman fight in London? I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish. One of uh, a good friend of mine was actually fighting his first UFC bout that night. So we made the plan to go. Christian Leroy Duncan, shout out Christian. We made the plan to go, but his opponent, um, it was a quick fight. His opponent uh, hurt his leg or something, so they didn't get to finish the fight. So I was watching, but I was not able to attend. I wish I could have to see my friend Christian though. What was your thoughts on the main event, Leon Edwards versus Kamar Usman? Uh, it was a great fight. You know, I was uh, personally pulling for Kamar Usman just on a, that's my personal bias, Nigerian guy, you know. But I respect Leon Edwards fighting a lot. He's really, 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 really talented. I think he deserved it. Is there any of, is there any of the fights you like watching? You said you like watching MMA and Cage Warriors. Is there any of it you like watching? Um, as far as the uh, MMA promotion or fighters in specific? Fighter, like the one you would tune in no matter what. Oh, okay. Um, there are a couple, you know, the UFC, there are a couple. It's going to Cage Warriors this past year. I got to know a couple of fighters as well, like Christian. I was talking about Adam Cullen from Liverpool. It was a pretty exciting fighter that I got to meet. So, yeah, just... As I go, I watch more fights. It's more people come up, have exciting fighting styles, and gravitate towards them. Another Nigerian in the UFC, Ezra Adesanya. Do you watch his fight against Alex Pereira? Of course, of course. Did you? Yeah, of course I did. Who do you see for myself? Okay, okay. Because so I was seeing you looking at your notes earlier. You're not looking at any notes for the UFC stuff. You know all this no. off the top of your head. <laughs> yeah, watch it every week. <laughs> 
big to it. Okay, okay, that's cool, man. As well as basketball, obviously, when you guys call it soccer in the U in the US, do you watch any Leicester City games? You know, I never made it to a Leicester City game. I guess what we were told as the team, we were supposed to go there after we won the cup and the league and whatnot, but never made it to a Leicester City game. I was waiting on on that event to happen so I can go. But I did get to see a Man U game. Not a Man U fan, but it was nice to see a Premier League game while I was in England. Would you want to go to more Premier League games next season during, while well, you're in the UK for the basketball season? Of course. I mean, I was trying to go to more. It's just tough with our schedule and uh, what, you know, we're always playing on the weekends and stuff, so it's tough to get there. So, but yeah, I love I love watching uh, football as well. As well as tennis, do you watch any other, like, is there any particular tennis player you like watching? There are a couple. Um, so, when I first started watching tennis, Warinka. I think I'm pronouncing it wrong. I think the W's are V's in Polish, but Warwick was really exciting when I first started watching tennis. Um, I love the Australian guy, Kyrgios, that everybody hates. I think he puts on a show every time he plays. Um, but yeah, this, I mean, it depends. Alcaraz, this young Spanish guy, he's really exciting lately. I think he's going to be really, really good. He's like under 20 still, I think winning major so yeah I like tennis a lot too were you able to make it out to Wimbledon or was that another one that just clashed with your schedule no you know it's usually happening at a time where I'm already back in the states so it would be tough to go there just for that to come back here you know so but I would love to I would love to do you have any pre-games rit rituals is it like a certain song or certain you know thing you do mm. Nah, not for real. I mean, just try to keep it pretty regular. I don't, I'm not one to get too, too deep into the rituals because what if it goes wrong one day? Is my day just going to crumble, you know? So I don't, I don't really do all that. Do you know how to like your left sock on, on like your left foot first or something like that? Or is it just all oh, never day, never dollar? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I actually do do that. <laughs> But that's every day. That's every day, though. It's not like a, a game day specific thing. You know what I mean? So I, I that's why I didn't mention that one. But I definitely do do that. Obviously, playing basketball, what's the biggest lesson you've learned from basketball, which like you've adopted to your regular normal life? Oh, so many. So, so, so many. Maybe uh, the biggest one, maybe I would say just discipline and self-accountability. I think that's a big one that you could take from any sport, really, depending on what sports you play, especially team sports. We're having to deal with other people most of the days and collaborate to all uh, achieve the same thing. I think that's going to one of the biggest things I've learned from that is just being self-disciplined and holding yourself accountable, holding up your end of the bargain. I think that's an important lesson. You think that's something you can take into your regular life too, take like holding up yourself off the bargain, whether that's family or relationships? Oh, for sure, for sure. I mean, that's what I was really relating it to. Like, that's something you could take beyond sport, past sport, through sport, all that. So even when the ball stops bouncing, I think learning that lesson from sport um, definitely helped me the rest of the life I live. Having a decorated career, but not playing in multiple different countries, who, who would you say the best player you played with? Best player I've played with as a professional, I'm assuming, no? Well, as any, if you want. Throughout your career um, in basketball. Wow. The best player I've played with. Man, I would have to... This, mm, this is a good question, you know. Maybe I will say Tyler Ulis, who I played travel basketball with when we were younger. Um, he went to Kentucky. He got drafted by Phoenix Suns, I believe. But he just made the game a lot easier for everybody. Like, he just did everything. All you had to do was lay the ball in or make an open shot. He was really good at uh, reading the game and just making the game super easy for everybody else. 
Well, being back in Chicago, what's it like? What's Chicago like, this city? Um, it's a lot different from Leicester, for sure, <laughs> to say the least. But I mean, I mean, obviously it's home for me, so I'm going to be a little bit biased, but it's just fun, especially when it's hot, warm like this, the sun is out, people are outside, there's always something to do in the city, no matter what you like to do, if you just like to read, I mean, there are cooler places to read with views and stuff like that, so I mean. It's always exciting and fun to be around, especially when the weather is nice like this. Do you have proper winters too in Chicago, like over in the UK? Oh, yeah, but it, I think it snows a lot more here than in the UK. I haven't lived up north, so I don't really, I can't really compare it to that, but it's pretty regular snowfall in Chicago during the winters and it gets quite cold. What was that like growing up, having that much snow around in the winter? It had its advantages, you know? I mean, back then I liked the snow because you can play in it. Now I think it's just the inconvenience. But, I mean, there were a couple snow days growing up where, like, the snow was too much to go to school. So that was always a plus. <laughs> Getting the free day off school. But, I mean, nah, now nah, it's just, it's really just an inconvenience, to be totally honest. Everything gets slower when it's snowing out as much as it does here. Well, as well, knowing the, U.S. when there's snowing in the U.K. is far, far between. But has it snowed since you've been in the U.K.? Oh yeah, a couple of times, but very like very light. Like maybe you see it snowing, and then by the end of the day or the next morning or something, it's gone. So I, that's definitely different than the way I grew up, where snow would be on the, the streets for like weeks on end, days on end. Growing up in Chicago, I'm guessing you're a big Chicago fan, Bulls fan. Oh. Yeah, a little bit. Um, I mean, I support the I support all the Chicago sports, uh, both baseball teams. Even though that's like a a sin here to support both baseball teams, but I'm not too partial. I just it's fun to go to baseball games. It's fun to go to soccer or yeah, soccer games. Chicago Fire. It's fun to go to you know women's WNBA games over the summer. So they, I just support all the sports here. You find it hard keeping up with all the sports in the U.S. whilst you're in the U.K. playing for the Riders. I mean, it's definitely more difficult because obviously it's just not the domestic sport and it's not going to be in all the media or on TV all the time. But, I mean, everyone has iPhones or whatever with Wi-Fi. So, I mean, it just takes a little bit of effort. Check them out when you got some free time. You find playing in Europe... Well, like four or five years now, do you find it's becoming more of a mainstream sport, basketball, and competing with that football over here? I think uh, BBL is doing a really, really good job since I've been here, at least, of trying to grow the game on a couple of different levels. I see them doing a lot of stuff, like in the communities with the youths and stuff. So, And they're growing the league in a really, really, really positive, interesting way. So I think that's definitely going to help turn the tide of things as far as basketball goes in the UK. I don't know if it's competing with football anytime soon just because culturally it's so massive in the UK, but basketball is definitely growing as it should. What do you think of the British Basketball League going more into a playoffs um, series at the end of the season, like in, over in the NBA? I think it's really good. Um, just to be uniform with the way the rest of the world does things because the aggregate score thing that they, the model they used to have is, I'd never seen it before until I came to the UK and I played a lot of basketball. So that was super interesting to see. I think it's more like I, like we talked about earlier, just the culture of uh, football so embedded in the UK. They kind of intercepted that like aggregate score model, but I don't think that's the the best way to play basketball. So I'm excited that they're going back to series like, I don't know what it is. Best out of five or three. I'm not sure what it is, but I'm excited to see series be back in basketball. I think that's the way it should be. That's how it is in the rest of the world as well. You think it will help to put more emphasis on the playoff games, on the huge, on the bigger games? Maybe it's tied free to thrill, five, five, whatever it is, to get more fans watching. Yeah, honestly, I just think it's more captivating. Like the aggregate score 
is um, the second game, you know, no one's really playing basketball in its purest form. You're like playing the score that you had 48 hours ago, which, you know, nobody practices like that. Nobody grew up playing like that. So it's, it was it's strange for a lot of people. But I mean, obviously, we're going to do our job and try to win the games. That's our job. But I do believe from a fan's perspective, it'll allow more um, organic game to happen, which is going to be more exciting, which is during the playoffs too. So that's always exciting. So I definitely think that could help bring bring people in and attract people to watch some games. For the regular season, do you find a taxing on the body with the physical uh, therapy that you'll have to you have to do? Definitely, definitely. Got really lucky the last couple of years with Coach Rob at Leicester because um, he played the game. He was a pro. He was overseas away from family and all that stuff. So he just really understood the nuances of things and how we were feeling. So he did a super, super good job. Like, honestly, the best I've ever had experience with and just managing our bodies the best way he can, and asking God how they felt and then adjusting his plan according to how we felt which is not the case everywhere. You know, a lot of people are practicing really, really hard all through the year, which, of course, is going to take a toll on your body come February, March. But I think Rob did a really, really good job of, uh, you know, knowing when to ramp things up, knowing when to relax, knowing when we needed to get some extra work in. So shout out to Rob on that. Well, to finish up, Jabril, I've got some NBA players in front of me. We could play a bit of word association. One word, first word of phrase that comes into your mind. Okay. So it's Steph Curry. Hot. LeBron James. Goes. Kobe Bryant. Legend. Michael Jordan. Legend. Kyrie Irving. Disgusting. In a good PD. way, a positive way. KD. <laughs> Sorry, who? KD, Kevin Durant. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, incredible. Luka Doncic. Amazing. Draymond Green. <laughs> That's my word. Ha ha ha. Um. Well, thank you so much for your time, Jabril. Jay, thank you, man. Thanks for having me on the show. This was really cool. I appreciate you. Thank you for coming on. Yep. Take care.